Heavenly Father, we ask you a blessing on the reading of your word. May your Holy Spirit be our guide today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to look at the book of Revelation at least a little bit. We may not go all the way through it. Maybe we will. Uh, we'll see how uh, things go. But, uh, you know, from the start of the Bible, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Uh, to the end of the Bible, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. The book is all about God. It's all about Jesus. Jesus said, search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life. These are they that testify of me. The scriptures all testify of Jesus. What was spoken of by the prophets of old was all about the Messiah, Jesus Christ, that the Bible is the book about the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, revelation, not revelations, by the way, it's not plural, it's revelation. Revelation, it's the revelation of, of John about Jesus Christ. It's the revealing of Jesus Christ is what the book of Revelation is about. Daniel saw the same vision that John saw, but he was told to seal it up. He, he wasn't allowed to tell certain parts in the book. But Revelation, John was said, he could reveal everything. And we have the revelation of Jesus Christ. And it talks about all the things uh, that are the things that will be the things that shall be hereafter. It gives us uh, great detail. Now, a lot of people look at Revelation and they uh, take it allegorically. There are some times that we're going to look at things and, and they're given as... Uh, symbolic when it says things uh, such in a simile, it'll use the words like or as. But generally, uh, revelation is very, it should be taken very literal and things are going to happen in a literal way as they're explained in revelation. We shouldn't apply all the allegory and impose ideas and guesses into what it says. So let's start out in revelation uh, one, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Revelation gives a blessing to the people that would read it Hear it and or adjust a little bit. Read it, hear it, and keep the things which are written there. And there's a there's a blessing, you know. So we want to read it, and we want to be uh, hearers that uh, listen and do the things that God has asked us to do. If we look at James really quick, James one it says uh, in in James one verses twenty one to twenty five it says, "Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness." and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. Okay, now that doesn't mean that uh, something that we do uh, saves our soul. It's only trusting Jesus Christ. And just to go through, as, as I generally do, uh, this hand represents you and me. This hand represents sin. If we, uh, we have all sin and come short of the glory of God, uh, we all have sin. So uh, we all deserve hell because the wages of sin is death and that's eternal separation from God. Okay, but God sent his son, God in the flesh, born of a virgin, and he lived the only perfect life. To go to heaven, we have to be perfect. We're not perfect. We have sin. But Jesus Christ was perfect. He lived the only uh, sinless life. We can't go to heaven by our own good works. We cannot get there. That's an impossibility. Anything we do, it's not by works of righteousness, which we have done. But according to his mercy, he saved us. God sent his only son. He loves us, but he hates our sin. He says we will be eternally separated from him in hell. But Christ went to the cross. He lived the only perfect life. Christ died for our sins. And the Bible says, what do we have to do to be saved? It says we have to do one thing. We have to believe on him whom he has sent. If we believe and we trust that he did it for us, we understand that we're a sinner that needs a savior and we trust only him, not trusting in ourselves, not trusting partially in us doing better. He says, 
that he pays the sin debt for us and he sees us as if we never sinned and now we can go to heaven because now we're seen as perfect. And th that's the gospel. Well, in James 1, it says that if you're a believer, we're supposed to lay apart our filthy type lifestyles so that we have a saved soul in this life, that we have a life that is saved. It says, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty. Now, James 1.25, there are a lot of people who think James is written that if you don't have good works or you aren't keeping the law, that it's written uh, to save yourself, that you need it, it works in addition. James 1.25 is one you want to read and digest. It makes it very clear that this passage is not talking about that. It's talking about having a blessed life, which is the same thing Revelation says. Whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein. When we follow God's commands, we are commanded as believers to keep his laws, not to stay saved. Salvation is the free gift. When we trust in him, we are forgiven of our sin, and it's a free gift. Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. It's what we deserve. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord when we trust him. But verse 25, if you look into the perfect law of liberty, God says that we should not continue in sin. It says, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. And now see, we're not saved by works. You can go to Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, for by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, not of works, lest any man should boast. Nobody's going to be in heaven in part by their works, not at all. For if it is by grace, it is no more work. If by works, it is no more grace. We read that in Romans eleven six. But we be a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deed. We want to be blessed in our deed. Going back in Revelation, to be blessed uh, when we hear the words of this prophecy, uh, we read, we hear, and we uh, keep the things that are written therein. So we say, you know what? Uh, we don't want to be making the mistakes that these uh, churches, that Revelation is written to the churches. It's written for the church age. We should read those things. Uh, and we should apply them to our life, then we'll be blessed in our deed. And that's the same thing. If you're a Christian, you want to be living a godly life. You want to be living a holy life to be blessed in your deed, which is the saving of your soul in this life, but the saving of your soul from hell. Notice in James, it never mentions the blood of Jesus Christ, never mentions hell. It never mentions uh, the cross of Christ. It's not referring to salvation. In James, it's always referring to the blessing that we receive in this life, and it's written to believers. First uh, John 2.28 says, And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence, not being ashamed before him at his coming. Now, see, little children, he's writing to believers, but there are believers who are not going to be blessed in their deed. There are believers who don't hear the words of God, and they're going to be ashamed but it says they're before him. If you notice in 1 John 2, 28, 1 John is written to believers and there will be believers that aren't living right, but they're still going to go because they trusted Christ as Savior. When you trust Christ as Savior, he gives you a free gift of eternal life and is not by works. If you are a believer and you're not living right, he says, hey, you need to... Uh, start living right. You need to confess your sin to me, but only believers confess their sin to God. Uh, to get saved, we simply trust in Christ. So uh, I think we'll end there for today. It's just the start of Revelation. I think that'll be uh, the first one. A, a lot there that we have a blessing in reading the book of Revelation. So that's why I want to go through that. We'll go through it rather slowly. Uh, we'll end there for today. May the Lord bless you with the reading of his word today.